Hi, this is Dr. Michelle O'Donoghue reporting for Medscape. I'm here at the American Heart Association Conference in Philadelphia, and one of the big breaking stories here are the primary results of the SELECT trial. So joining me today to discuss the trial and its implications is Dr. Nicholas Marsden, who specializes in preventative medicine. He's a clinical trialist with the Timmy Study Group and a cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Thank you for joining me, Nick. Thanks, Michelle, for having me. So really, it's huge news. I mean, I think it really is a game changer on so many levels. Yeah. So for those who are perhaps not yet familiar with the SELECT study, uh, yeah. let's just talk about what it looked at and, and who it studied. Yeah, absolutely. So it's 17,000 patients, uh, phase three cardiovascular outcomes trial. And importantly, these patients all had a BMI of 27 or greater. So they had obesity or they were overweight. They also had ASCVD defined by uh, prior MI, stroke, or PAD. And then importantly, they did not have diabetes. So previously they've studied uh, patients with diabetes. These patients did not have diabetes. A1C had to be below 6.5. Uh, and then they randomized these patients one-to-one -one com um, comparing semaglutide uh, to placebo and looked at follow-up of over three years for a primary endpoint of MI, stroke, or CV death, kind of a composite uh, outcome. And as you mentioned, very exciting results. Uh, found a 20% reduction in the primary endpoint, uh, significant. And, uh, you know, it got an applause today at the uh, uh, late-breaking session. Yeah, it's rare that people are, you know, so pleasantly surprised that they break into applause. <laughs> but, but it really is a game-changer because yeah. as we think about it, I mean, semaglutide has been out there. And, you know, initially it was thought of as a, primarily as a diabetes medication. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think the fact that there was weight loss associated with its use has helped to, to further, um, you know, uh, increase its use that we've seen. Right. But to now have actually a trial, this is now a secondary prevention trial of yeah. people with obesity who um, have established a cardiovascular disease but do not have diabetes. Right. And the drug reduces major adverse cardiovascular events. And there was even a reduction in all-cause mortality that was seen. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that was huge and got another reaction from the audience. I mean, we knew, we've used these drugs for a long time, right? But I think they've had a lot of fanfare now because the higher doses of semaglutide have caused such weight loss. Uh, and so, you know, we've, we've known they've had cardiovascular reduction in patients with diabetes. Now we're expanding that to patients without diabetes. Uh, and now we're treating an axis of risk of, you know, obesity that we thought was a risk factor but didn't really have a good way to treat it previously. And so, you know, you think about tr treating coronary disease, uh, you know, you think about lipids, hypertension, diabetes, inflammation, and now, you know, weight management and treating obesity and, and overweight patients is, is a very real option for us. It's a game changer. Yeah, so semaglutide is a GLP-1 receptor agonist. So uh, what do we know about how the drug works? Like what, what is reported to be the possible mechanism by which it's conferring all this benefit? Yeah, it's, it has probably multiple mechanisms, but one is that, you know, it, it slows down kind of your, your gut, it decreases appetite, and so you end up eating a lot less. And we actually see that when we look at the side effects, GI symptoms are one of the most common. 10% of patients had GI symptoms, nausea, vomiting, bloating. That's part of what kind of makes this work. Patients, they don't think about food as much, they, uh, you know, aren't eating as much, then they lose weight, and that, you know, seems to have some downstream effects uh, on, you know, things like blood pressure, lipids, inflammation, all of which could contribute to this reduction in cardiovascular events. Yeah, it's interesting to think about whether, um, you know, a lot of the, the benefit that we see with the drug in terms of blood pressure coming down, inflammation really coming down quite impressively. Yeah. And I think that was one of the things that struck me with this study was that these people had very high C-reactive protein levels at, yeah. at baseline. Um, and they, they did come down quite impressively with yeah. um, um, with treatment. Yeah, it was, you know, 40%, almost 40% reduction of high sensitivity CRP. This is on par with what we saw with resuvastatin in the Jupiter trial and with kenikinumab and Cantos, uh, all around 40%. So, you know, that's got to be an important, um, a, a kind of important pathway here. Yeah. And what's also interesting, too, is that the, the clinical benefit in terms of reducing cardiovascular events appeared very early after starting this drug. Yes. So it actually seemed to occur even faster than the weight loss trajectory, right, right. which I saw, you know, continued to lose weight until about 12 months. Yeah. And yet very, very early on after starting the drug, um, there appeared to be a reduction in cardiovascular events. Yeah, you're right. So you wonder, you know, at first you think, oh, could this all be through weight loss and the downstream effects? But perhaps some of this is, is uh, working independently of the weight loss. And I think the early separation of the curves suggests that one 
uh, of those potential pathways is blood pressure. You know, could there be an earlier impact on blood pressure? It was a small reduction, but it's three millimeters of mercury, and that would actually translate to per perhaps explain about a third of the, the um, cardiovascular risk reduction that we see. So, you know, that, that may be um, one explanation at least. Yeah, because it's really interesting to think about. I mean, as a preventive cardiologist, we often, you know, have conversations with patients about weight. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it's, I think really lends credence to the idea that weight loss really does have a very important role in and of itself in terms of reducing um, somebody's cardiovascular risk profile. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it changes the paradigm of how we think about obesity. And I think obesity specialists have been saying this for a long time, and this is validating because it really shows that obesity is a disease that can be treated. Uh, and so hopefully this will, um, you know, help make physicians recognize it more, you know, and put it, put it up there with the other risk factors uh, because now we have something to do about it. So the implications are really quite broad. Yeah. You know, if we think about how many patients are out there who are either overweight or have obesity yeah. and have established cardiovascular disease, right. there are a lot of people yeah. who hypothetically could be on this drug. Yeah, yeah, a absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, we, we do use these drugs in the cardiology clinic um, for patients with diabetes, but, you know, that's actually still a minority of patients with ASCVD have diabetes, and, and a lot of them are overweight or have obesity. And so it really does expand uh, who, who we're going to be treating in the, in the clinic. So certainly cost will be one challenge, yeah. and um, you know I think we'll have to see where insurers land in terms of being able to, to get the drug approved for now a broader patient population. Yeah. But you mentioned also just the, the GI tolerability. Yeah. What other side effects do clinicians need to be thinking about if they're going to be prescribing this? Yeah, so it is um, an injectable therapy, and so there are uh, injection site reactions. Those were pretty uh, rare, um, but there was a s significant increased uh, risk of that in the trial. So that's one thing. The, the GI tolerability is probably the biggest one. It was about a five-fold increase in the treatment arm versus the placebo arm. Uh, and then there were small but significant increases in um, uh, biliary uh, disease, biliary tract disease, as well as kind of nutritional disorders. So I think, you know, we'll want to see more data on that. It's nice to have this longer term follow up data. But again, we've been using these drugs for a long time. And overall, the long term safety profile is is very good. Yeah, it'll be interesting, too, to think about whether or not it's really just a broader class effect, yeah. you know, or how much does this need to be um, drug specific. And this just happens to be the, the first therapy in that class right. to specifically study this broader patient population. Right, right. And one thing I would also note about tolerability is that, you know, the, the percent of patients that came off was, was not insignificant. It was about 25% that came off therapy during the trial. Now a lot came off in the placebo arm, too, over 20%, so it wasn't too different. But, you know, I, I think not all patients are going to tolerate these drugs. But if they do, it seems to work really well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how much the weight loss appeared to correlate with the cardiovascular benefit. Yes. You know, did people who didn't even lose a pound, did did they actually have right. um, any cardiovascular benefits from, from therapy? And, right. and also the, the interplay with inflammation, too. I'm, I'm very interested to see that down the road. Absolutely. Um, how much was C-reactive protein identifying those patients who, who benefited the most? Yeah, you can you can just like anticipate the additional analyses they're going to do. And I'm sure at meetings to come, we're going to continue to see follow-up studies from, from Select, which is exciting. Yeah. Well, I think it, uh, the whole class is, is a very exciting one because, yeah. you know, when you think about just several years ago, when we thought about weight loss therapies, usually the concern was that they would cause excess risk of cardiovascular events. Right. Um, but here we, we've got the opposite. It's really flipped it around. Yeah. Um, and now with a weight loss therapy, we also have the additional benefit of, of reducing cardiovascular events. So it's a yeah. great option for many patients. It is. And, and patients are excited about it because of the weight loss. And now cardiologists are excited <laughs> about it because of the cardiovascular risk reduction. So it's going to be a good, a good match, I think, in terms of both parties wanting to get patients on it. You know, sometimes patients aren't as excited as we are about lowering their LDL. But here with weight loss, they're <laughs> going to be excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure there'll be a lot of great sub-studies to come from this um, yeah. and uh, a lot more to, to stay tuned and watch for. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Signing off for Medscape, this is Dr. Michelle O'Donoghue.